Hey guys, hey Lucas, Cameron, Fox. I hope you guys are having a good weekend. Um, so um, I'm ready to um, to upload a bunch of stuff for you guys. And so um, so let's get started. I hope you've been working on those problems and enjoyed your uh, your um, your hiatus. Um, anyway, let's. Um, Let's go back. Remember, uh, this is uh, modern physics. We're still in the fall semester 2020. I'm going to call this chapter five, part one. Okay, and so uh, it's been a while since we've uh, gotten together, so I want to do a quick. Um, a quick recap of the Bohr model of the atom. And so, um, and then um, segue into the correspondence principle, which is uh, super important. And then that will signal the end of this chapter. So this might take, um, this might take two or three installments. And so um, uh, let's, uh, let's get started. I hope, uh, hope you guys are enjoying the weather. I hope, uh, I hope you are pleased with the, um, finally, with the uh, nail biting uh, election outcome. So it's now time for us to uh, get back to work. So, um, so you'll remember the, the postulates, and there's four of them. The postulates of the Bohr model were uh, one, um, the, the atom um, is, is such that the electrons are considered to be in circular orbits, right? Circular orbits around the nucleus. Two um, is that um, the angular momentum, the angular momentum is quantized. That means it can only can only have certain values, and it was quantized in integer values of h bar, um, where h bar was h over two pi and n is integer. Okay. Um, three is that even though the electron is in circular orbit around the nucleus and hence um, accelerating, Right through radial or centripetal acceleration, um, there's no no emission no emission of electromagnetic radiation uh, when in a stationary orbit. And lastly. Uh, when the electron does um, make a um, make a transition from one orbit or energy to another orbit or energy, <clears throat> that the um, the change the change in the electrons the change in the change in the electrons energy <clears throat> is accompanied. We'll write it this way is accompanied, accompanied by either the absorption, the absorption or emission of a photon. Of a photon. And that energy change is given by E is equal to H times F, where H is Planck's constant and F is the frequency. So um, just to um, recall, this is 1913, okay? Um, the word photon still hasn't been invented, right? So the word photon actually was invented in 1928 by uh, Gilbert Lewis. 
Whoops. He was a chemist, famous for um, Lewis structures. So we do have um, we do have the notion of uh, light coming in um, quantized packets as well. Um, that as a um, that as a conclusion to uh, to the photoelectric effect and Compton scattering, um, which we described in um, in great detail. Okay, so um, anyway, so so there we have it. All right, so um, the picture that emerges then from the Bohr model is that we have um, we have the nucleus and its charge is plus Z times E, where Z is the atomic number. And we are dealing with hydrogenic, hydrogenic atoms or, um, or um, ions. And these are one electron systems, okay? So these are one electron systems. One electron systems. Some radius. Okay, some velocity. All right. And um, the way this goes is um, we know that the we know that the force responsible, the force responsible is the electrostatic force, which is one over four pi epsilon zero, BZE times E, charges in magnitude over R squared, okay? We know that the only acceleration is radial or centripetal in nature. And so then this is gonna be the mass of the electron times V squared over R, okay? We know that the Angular momentum through postulate number two is um, is quantized, and we know that the angular momentum. You will recall the angular momentum is um, r cross p. The magnitude of the angular momentum then is going to be r mv sine of theta, where theta is the smallest angle between the radius vector and the angular mo or linear momentum vector. Like theta is 90 degrees. Sine of 90 degrees is one. And so the magnitude of the angular momentum is R M V. Okay, so this is gonna be R M V. All right, we can solve for V here. V then is going to be N H bar over M sub E times R. M sub E is the mass of the electron. And uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to take this and plug it into here. Okay, so let's do that. We have one over four pi epsilon zero Z E squared over R squared, we have M sub E over R times B squared, which is gonna be N squared H bar squared over M sub E squared um, R squared. Okay, so um, these go. And so we're left with now um, one over four pi epsilon zero. Uh, one of the masses goes with one of those. This is gonna be then Z E squared is equal to N squared H bar squared over R times M sub E. And I think we're I think we're good here. So um, we can solve for R. 
r then is going to be equal to um, 4 pi epsilon 0 h bar squared n squared all over m sub e times z e squared. Okay. Where n is integer, one, two, three, etc. Okay, and you'll notice that the um, the radius, the radius of the orbit is quantized. Okay, and if um, one were to um, one were to look at, if one were to look um, at, um, at this, right? So for, for Z equals one, that is hydrogen. Then four pi, four pi epsilon naught h bar squared over m sub e, e squared is actually now going to be defined to be the Bohr radius. This is the Bohr radius. And as we determined in class, this is 0.529 angstroms, which is 0 0.0529 nanometers. Okay, so now let's, um, let's look at this now using energy considerations. So let's go back and look at this problem using energy considerations. And so um, for this problem, right, the total energy, the total energy of the electron, total energy of the electron is going to be its electrical potential energy plus its kinetic energy. Now you'll recall that the electrical potential energy, I'm gonna start calling potential energies V, right? You might be used to seeing it this way, electrical potential energy. But we're gonna start writing potential energies as V. And so um, V of R is equal to one over four pi epsilon zero it's going to be Z E times negative E over R. And you will recall uh, from university physics that the sign of the charge must appears, must appear in the in the electrical potential energy uh, expression. All right. The kinetic energy then is just going to be one half mv squared. So let's Let's um, write these in. So it's going to be one over four pi epsilon zero. So it's going to be negative z e squared over r plus uh, one half m sub e v squared. Okay. And that's e total. All right, but um, from, from Newton's second law, from Newton's second law, right, we have one over four pi epsilon zero, z e squared over r squared is equal to m sub e v squared over r. One of these goes with one of these. And I'm going to multiply both sides by a one half. So this is going to be one 
over four pi epsilon zero, ZE squared over two R is equal to one half M sub V squared. And this is the kinetic energy. And so we can throw that into here, right? And so what we get then is we get that E total is gonna be equal to one over four pi epsilon zero, negative Z E squared over, um, over R plus one over four pi epsilon zero. Okay. So be Z E squared over two R and so E total then is gonna be negative one over four pi epsilon zero Z E squared over two R. Okay. Now remember we're gonna we're gonna substitute in for R again, right? So um, remembering that R is equal to four pi epsilon naught h bar squared over m sub e z e squared times n times n squared where n is an integer and we're going to plug that into here so we're going to get e total is equal to one over four pi epsilon zero. So it's gonna be Z E squared over two <clears throat> times R, which is four pi epsilon zero H bar squared over M sub E Z E squared times N squared. And that's negative. So now at the end of the day, right, after I clean up, I clean up that expression, I'm gonna have negative one over four pi epsilon zero, Z E squared, um, squared times M sub E um, over two, h bar squared um, one over n squared and the one over four pi epsilon zero here is also squared okay so i think i think we're good here okay so so now um we're calling our definition of a naught we can write this in terms of a naught E total then is going to be negative one over four pi epsilon zero. It's going to be Z E squared over two A naught times one over N squared, where N is equal to an integer one, two, three, etc. Okay, that's in terms of the Bohr of the Bohr radius. <clears throat> And clearly, um, if we look at this, this is going to have this is going to have units of energy. And this will be units of energy. And if we plug if we plug all those constants in, we get that E total is going to be negative thirteen point six electron volts over n squared. N equals one, two, three, et cetera, okay? So the rule we get here then is that um, the energy is quantized, right? So the energy, the energy of the electron is quantized 
energy of the electron is quantized. And we'll, um, we'll end this module here and we'll pick up um, where we started at the end of the lecture in class, that is with the energy spectrum, okay? So um, we'll uh, look at the energy spectrum uh, next, okay? So this is the end of part one. All right, guys, I'll put this up and uh, I'll continue on. So um, again, hopefully you're gonna get out and enjoy some of this really just absolutely gorgeous weather. Enjoy it for me since I'm uh, cooped up um, at my uh, kitchen table. All right, take care guys, all right, bye.